Good morning and welcome to our 11 o'clock service on this wonderful Sunday morning. Just want to share three things with you before we start our service. Firstly, we want you to stay safe and uh, we must comply with the way that the government is asking us to live in these days. But also, I want you to uh, be conscious of the fact that God's protection is over your life. And then secondly, stand firm in faith. Allow God to really minister to your heart and encourage you in these days. Whilst we're in isolation, many of us, we are asking God to enable us to make these days count for our spiritual life and development. And then finally, just to say, stay with us all the way through to the completion of this service because we are journeying in a specific direction together. I pray that God will bless you and minister to you in the name of Jesus. Let's pray before we start our service. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your anointing will be upon every person as they come through this celebration together. We ask, Lord, that everyone that takes part will minister under the unction of your Spirit and that every person that listens to this on the screen or through YouTube, Lord, we pray will have a fresh encounter with you in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, you will instruct us, that you will train us and you will equip us to live a life that pleases you for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our God is the lion, the lion 
verse 1 to 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered, because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to, the, I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Matthew chapter 13 from verses 14 to 23. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn an eye would heal them. But blessed are you, are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen to what the parable of a sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth 
may choke out the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on so good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Everlasting Father, our Lord and our God, we thank you again for this wonderful day. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for your faithfulness over your people. We thank you for your mercy over your creation. Father, we have come before you to present ourselves as living sacrifice this morning. We have come to listen to your word, the word that you're going to be sending through your minister and your servant. Father, we thank you that your minister can minister to us despite the distance. And Lord, as we listen to your word today, let your word minister love, let your word minister deliverance, let your word minister peace, let your word minister the courage that we need to survive in this, in this current world. And Father, as we continue to worship you, as we continue to honor you, as we continue to adore you, and as we continue to praise you this morning, Father, let your will be done. Let your power be made manifest in our midst. Bring deliverance, bring healing, bring courage, bring understanding everlasting, Father. We thank you for your wisdom in our lives. Father, as we continue the service, Father, let your word touch us, touch our innermost being, Father, that we will come to know you more and more as our personal Lord and Savior. Lord, have your way today, and let your name alone be glorified, Father, in the midst of your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes so bless the Lord oh my soul oh holy name sing like never before oh my soul I worship your holy name your rich in love and your slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to sing Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul Strength is failing, the end draws near, 
And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore So bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Your holy name. I will worship your holy name. I will worship your holy Well, we're turning to the Word of God now, and I'm reminding you of our reading from Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus explains that there are secret things concerning the kingdom of God that we can only see and understand as we allow the revelation of His Spirit to bring enlightenment. We need our eyes open. We need our ears open. And I think this is especially relevant in the times in which we are living. We need to understand the times and the seasons because God is speaking very loudly in our generation. So may the eyes of your heart and may your spiritual ears be opened and in tune to hear from God today. Well, Jesus says, blessed are you if you hear and if you see, and the context is concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus goes on to explain that uh, in every generation, there are those who can hear and see, and those who, because of their unbelief and rejection and blindness of spirit, cannot see. And in this passage of scripture, he quotes Isaiah, saying that there will be people who will be ever hearing, but never understanding. There will be people who will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. And Jesus goes on to explain in this passage of Scripture that our understanding and perception is derived from several sources. Firstly, the Word of God is planted in your life like a seed. It's planted by Him as you read truth. Secondly, it is watered by the Spirit of God as He illuminates and as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. And thirdly, it brings a crop, a fruitfulness in your life. You know, real fruitfulness is about our character and our nature, not only our lifestyle, but that in our character and our nature and our ways, that we might be a real reflection of Jesus. God is not concerned about the outward appearance. He's concerned about the inner man. God doesn't look at the outside. He looks at the inside. And he is able to survey and see where we are at in our experience with God. And he's longing for us to grow deeper 
and for our roots to be firmer and stronger in him. And so Jesus explains in this passage that this is not about academic ability. It's not about our own natural understanding alone, although we need to study and read and grow in knowledge. This is about personal relationship with Christ. And so we know it's possible for a person to go to university or a Bible college and to spend four years, five years studying theology. Theology is is the uh, study of the nature of God and religion. And someone could do all that and have great academic understanding, but don't know Christ. And so the challenge for us today as I deliver this message is, yes, we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. But that is not information knowledge alone. That is a reference to personally knowing Christ in your life. Well, hallelujah. Our passage of scripture goes on to talk about the seed falling on specific ground. And I just want to ask three questions this morning. Firstly, what is happening in your heart? What is God doing in your life in these days? Because the Bible says that the possibility is there of the seed of God's word falling on to hearts different types of hearts, different ground in your life. So there's the potential of it falling on the surface and that it doesn't really take root. And it's described initially as one who has no understanding. So there's no growth in the understanding of the things of God. And if the seed of God has only come to that degree or that level in your life, the Bible says the evil one, Satan, will come and snatch that away from you. And he will do that by various means, choosing a life of sin or disobedience or rebellion, choosing to reject God or only allowing him entrance into certain compartments of your life, but not full surrender. And so Satan, who is our enemy, will use all means to rob you of the seed of the word. Secondly, it says the seed can fall on rocky ground or rocky places. And what that describes is someone who's allowed the word to come to a certain level, but again, no deep rooting in the knowledge and the growth of spiritual life. And what happens there is when troubles come, then the root will be snatched up, will be pulled up, and you will lose out spiritually. And then thirdly, Jesus talks about the one who has received the word, but the worries and the cares of life come. Anxieties come. And isn't that relevant today for the day in which we're living? And so that which God has planted in you has not come to the point where it's firmly rooted. And the things and the cares of life and also the deception of wealth and earthly gain choke that which God has planted in you and it's robbed from you. But thanks be to God, he also talks about good ground. I pray that the ground in your heart right now would be really solid and uh, and that the root of the word will come down deep so that you would find you can grow in the knowledge of God. And the Bible says that the one who allows the word to get really deep rooted in heart and mind will cause a crop to grow. It will grow. There will be fruitfulness in your spiritual life. Thanks be to God. Now, the second question I want to ask is what is happening in our time? We need to know what is happening in our time. 
Well, lots and lots of views and opinions are being expressed uh, uh, across the internet, etc. And I've already made reference to lots of the counterfeit uh, things and conspiracy theories that are going on around the world right now. So I just want to remind you of what the Bible says concerning the end times, because I do believe that we are moving very speedily towards the coming of the Lord. The Bible says that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Lord. What does that mean? Well, you know the story. Noah is building an ark and it's representative of Christ, who is the ark of God's salvation. And in the days of Noah, the Bible says that people were just carrying on. They weren't aware of the times or the seasons. They were unaware of the fact that suddenly a great threat was coming. And uh, Noah is a righteous and a holy and a godly man, and he leads his whole house into the ark, into the safety of God's care. And uh, in the world at that time, there were several things happening. People were uh, were focused on wealth. People were living a, 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 a rebellious lifestyle. People were doing what was right, what they felt was right in their own eyes. They rejected the call and the challenge of God to righteousness, holiness and purity. And there was also a great depth of sexual perversion, which I won't go into detail on. But I want to say it is just the way that our generation is living right now. Now, friends, this message of Christ in Matthew 13 is so relevant for every generation. Let me remind you what I mean of what I mean by that, because uh, uh, Isaiah said it to the house of Israel when God was revealing himself in the years where uh, God was moving in Israel and revealing his love and care for her, and she rejected him. And then the same word is spoken in the last few verses of the Acts of the Apostles where Luke writes down about the early church. And in that passage of scripture, you'll find that he says the people's hearts have become calloused. They've become hard. They're rejecting. They're digging their heels in saying, we are going to live without God. We don't need him. And yet in that same passage of scripture, it also says, but if the people would only hear and if the people would only see and turn, then I would heal them. Hallelujah. That's the joy of this message today, friends, because whilst we're living in this time of great sickness, while we're living in this time of rejection of God and the deception of many faiths, let me tell you, there is a way back to God and the way is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, if we will seek his face, turn from our wicked ways and pray, then I would heal the land. So God is determined to bring his healing in these times. And thanks be to God, we can also then say, Lord, what are you saying in our generation? Well, friend, I believe that God is saying I'm coming soon. And I believe that God is saying, return to me. Return to me with all your heart. Seek my wisdom. Seek my knowledge. And seek my ways in your own life, in your family, and in your home. Well, if we had the time, I could take you to 2 Peter chapter 2. And in that passage of scripture, there's such an encouraging word. Because Peter mentions uh, Noah. He mentions Lot. And he mentions the godly who are living in every generation. Firstly of Noah, he says, don't forget that in a time of sudden devastation, I protected my servant Noah and saved him. I want to remind you that as you seek to live under God's favor and in his ways of salvation, the protection of the Lord shall be over you. No matter what is coming, you will know the protection of God. Secondly, remember that he was able to deliver Lot. In that generation where there was such confusion over spiritual matters, Lot was delivered 
and saved. And then thirdly, again in the passage of Scripture, it says God is able to save the righteous and the godly in a time of great trial. And so I'm reminding you that that is the case for you and your house, that the protection of God and the deliverance of God is upon you and available to you as you seek to live in the ways of God. Well, as we draw to a conclusion, I quote scripture to you. May the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your understanding be enlightened by the revelation of the love of God and the knowledge of God. May he grant you spiritual insight and perception. And may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. As I close, I want to point out several things that will enable you to do just that. We need to put a how-to on the, in the emphasis of the word today. How do you grow in your understanding concerning the secret things of the kingdom of God? Well, you take your word, you take your Bible, the word of God, and you open it more than you ever have done before. And you glean the truth from its pages. Sit quiet in the presence of God. Allow it to minister to your soul and your spirit. And God will teach you all things. And secondly, start to communicate with God more than you ever have before. Start the conversation. Begin to talk to him. All he wants is to hear your voice. Ask him the questions. Ask him to make himself known and real to you and to lead you into all truth. Pray and ask the Lord to minister into your soul. And finally, spread the good news. By all means, through your phone, through your computer, through your laptop, your iPad, by all means, start the conversation with God, but also start the conversation with your family, your loved ones, and those you're in contact with in these days that are so different. Now, I pray that God will speak to you in a deeper way, in a clearer way than you've ever known before. To God be the glory, in Jesus' name, amen.
days I will love you God Hallelujah Our God reigns Hallelujah Our God you about to close our service today and we would be delighted to hear from you. We'd love to hear your story and what is going on in your life right now so that we can pray effectively for you. If you'd like to communicate with us, send in your messages to admin at hicc.org and we will be in touch with you. Well, as we close, let's bow our heads in prayer together and it would be great if you could repeat this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the love that you have for humanity. We pray in these days of great sickness, when so many lives have been lost, that you would move with healing power in our time, not only in our own country, but right around the world. Bring a solution to this virus. And Lord, we ask that you will guide our scientists and a vaccination will be discovered. We pray, Lord, that you will bless all our doctors and nurses and carers who are serving in these critical days. We pray also for those who are keeping food on the shelves and delivering in our streets. And for whatever task, Lord, people are undertaking, we pray in the name of Jesus, your strength and your blessing would rest upon all. Now, Lord, we turn our attention to your church. Revival begins at the house of God. Revive your church. Bless your people. Strengthen your people. And Lord, right now, in every heart, in every home, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name.